Hello, welcome to my tech fam. This is Creative Falcon 2, 40 watt diet laser. This will be the strongest diet laser tested on this channel so far. I already presented the 22 watt uh, version from this uh, type and I was amazed with the quality and the linear motion. This one also has great linear motion. It is able for the 25,000 mm per minute speeds. It has adjustable light beam. This means since uh, it combines uh, eight uh, five watt diet lasers into one beam, we can turn off partly this big power and I believe that it will be better for the engraving in that case. It has automatic air assist uh, pump. This means it can be turned on and off uh, from the software because don't forget with the engraving, uh, you don't want to use the air assist pump only for the cutting. It has other safety functions like a safety lock, emergency stop button, tilt protection, flame detection and also lens monitoring. So we will get the message that we have to clean the lens or something like that. So this is also new to me. But let's see what's in the box. I <laughs> know before we open the box, few safety words. Uh, don't forget that the laser engravers are tools which require some safety equipment. Uh, the most important are safety glasses for everybody in that room. And you have to use this in good ventilated room or if you use this regularly, then uh, you should be some kind of enclosure. And actually I got uh, in a box uh, enclosure too, but it will be presented in a separate video. And also don't forget to uh, never leave the engraver without the attention. And now the unboxing. Everything is nicely protected in this black foam, so it will not be damaged during the shipping. This is the content of the box. The frame is completely assembled. Basically, we have to install the module, attach the air assist pump and the power cable, uh, screw in these legs and it's ready for the running in, I don't know, less than five minutes. Uh, we have these uh, tools, a protection sheet, and we have different extenders for the legs. And I really like that uh, we have a lot of sample materials, but of course I will not use these because I have my own, which I regularly using in this kind of videos, so the results are comparable with each other. Let's take a closer look of the module. This is a laser module, quite big, but not so heavy. The input voltage 24 volts and the optical power 40 watts. We have some LEDs here for the air, fire and the lens. Cooling fans are from the side, we have two of them, and here we can see the air assist. The air should be plugged here. Uh, and here is the button, so we can switch to change the power of this module, precise and normal. The power adapter has the output of 24 watts and 10 amperes, so this is really powerful, but don't forget that uh, it must give the power to the laser module, but also to the air assist pump. This is the air assist pump and I already have experience with this kind of machines. Uh, I know that they are quiet, uh, the power is not too big, but if the air assist nozzle is good, then it will work fine. And um, I can only find the information that it works on 24 volts, but no information about the airflow. In this corner of the engraver, we have the safety lock, the emergency stop button, slot for the SD card, USB plug and this is the plug for the pump and the power switch. And here we have some buttons uh, for the offline engraving, but more about it later. And now the assembling, well, let's measure the time. I'm starting with installing of four legs and then installing the air pump and installing the module and uh, connecting the pipe to it. Ready for engraving in approximately five minutes. This is the distancer for setting the focus and the top step is for the engraving because in this case the focus will be set to the top of the surface. If you want to do some cutting you want that focus to be a little bit deeper in material, in that case you have to use one of these steps. And now the focus is set to the top of the surface. These are those materials I'm regularly using in this video, different thickness and type of the wood, uh, black acrylic, anodized aluminum, stainless steel and similar. From software I will use both, uh, this is the laser JBL, but I will also use the light burn later. Uh, laser JBL is a free software but available only for Windows and it is quite limited, we can do only one operation at a time. And Creality don't really like CD, it doesn't support so well as the light burn. Uh, for example the air assist pump we can enable here by tapping the command M8. And with M9 we can disable it, but we can also change its power by typing this uh, command here. This number is between 0 and uh, 4. 0 is completely disabled, uh, 1 is 25% uh, and 4 is the maximal power. 
It also has some limitation in offline engraving, but I explained this in my previous video with the 22 watt uh, Falcon, so I will not go into details with uh, this one. It's connected, the fans are quite loud, later I measured the noise and I can see everything is connected and I can move the axis, but I will start the engraving from the light burn. So this is the light burn, it already started with the homing of the X and Y axis, Ah, it, it's uh, turned off. So it is good that uh, at least when it's not operating, the fan turns off. But anyway, the rest of the video will be narrated. Before I start my engraving test, I want to show you. So this is that button. Now it is on precise and normal. If I press this or wrong press, it is on precise. Uh -huh. Now both LEDs work, so now it's uh, in normal mode. So with this I can get the maximum power. Now what I'm missing here is the possibility to enable or disable this uh, from the software, because for example the engraving I would like to do with the precise mode and the cutting with the full power in normal mode. So this engraving I will repeat two times, uh, one will be in normal mode and the other will be in precise mode and uh, then I will compare two line types. I'm starting the engraving in uh, normal mode. First line with 100%, the other is with 60% power, and then switching to the precise mode, and again engraving the same two lines. Speeds from 1000 to 6000 mm per minute, and this is engraved in precise mode, and this is in the normal mode. 60% power and 100% power. And uh, well, of course, uh, we have nice sharper lines here on the approximately this speed, but since I cannot enable or disable it from the software, so I cannot do uh, the engraving in precise mode and then later the cutting in normal mode, the rest of the testing will be in normal mode, and for next engraving I will choose um, one of these uh, 5000 or 6000 millimeters per minute, 60% power. If I were the only engraving, in that case maybe in the precise mode uh, these lines are much sharper compared to these ones. Engraving my tech fan logo and this uh, engraving was prepared in the laser gear bear. Nice sharp engraving, maybe I could even lower the power. This was engraved in normal mode, 5000 mm per minute and 50% power. And now let's engrave some grayscale image. I did some experimenting, so first two engravings are in normal mode, this one is in precise mode, each of them 25,000 mm per minute speed, but these two are 80 and 50% and this one 90% power, and I think I will do the bigger engraving in these settings, 50% uh, power, normal mode, 25k speed. Now this plywood is not too good for this, I have a lot of horizontal lines here, very visible, and this uh, ruined the uh, grayscale image. But anyway, I will do here, and I have some smaller cleaner part, and we will see the result. And watching the engraving, exactly what I expected, so unfortunately these lines uh, ruined this grayscale image, but uh, very nice and sharp engraving, but I don't think that this was engraved on 25,000 mm per minute speed. I'm not sure what is the limitation in the firmware, because this was finished in approximately 4 minutes, but uh, it should be finished in 2.5 minutes if the speed was really 25k. And it's time to do some cuttings, and for the warm-up I will start with this 3mm thick plywood. And for cutting I will always use the air assist pump too. Cutting was successful in normal mode up to 800 mm per minute speed full power and you can see the air assist works nice, so even the cutting out part are very clean. And let's take the other side here. So you can see it is not equally strong in X and Y direction and almost it was cutting out on 10,000 mm per minute speed. And now let's see two cuttings side by side uh, with and without air assist. Well, effect of the air assist is quite obvious on both elements, and it is not only nicer, but it is also safer compared to this one. And it's time to move to 6mm thick uh, plywood, and here I will set the focus using this second step. Nice and sharp cuttings, and this is first time that I could cut this uh, six millimeter plywood even on 500 millimeters per minute speed. Well, here you can see some other similar 30 watt diode lasers. 
3mm thick uh, MDF wood and those weak laser engravers don't really like this uh, so some of them really struggle with this uh, type of the wood. So far the biggest speed I could cut this 3mm MDF was 500mm per minute speed with 600 no success so far. Let's try with this one. Again very nice sharp cuttings and even it was cutting out on 600 mm per minute speed which was the first time on this channel so definitely no questions about that strongest laser so far I tested. This is 20 mm thick wood and I will try two cuttings one in x direction and the other will be in y direction and here I will set the focus using this uh, third step. This is the cutting in x direction. And this is in y direction. Speed up four times. Both cuttings was on 100 mm per minute speed full power and uh, this time I'll try uh, 200 mm per minute speed to see if I will have nicer edge on the other side and this will be the first time I will try this speed but only in x direction. And this time much nicer cutting even on the other side. And now similar to black acrylic. Now typical problem with this black acrylic or similar dark surface is that we cannot see the laser spot during the framing. Let me show you. Cutting was successful on uh, 3, 4 and 500 mm per minute speed. On 600 mm per minute almost cut but not completely. This is the other side. I really like to work with anodized aluminum, these are from Churbaka company, because uh, it is not sensitive to settings, you will see different speeds, but it is also not flammable and um, there will be no smoke and similar. It was this line here from 2000 to 10,000 mm per minute speed and uh, I'm always using the same settings here but somehow this is whiter than the previous engraving so definitely very powerful laser. And now line engraving of the stainless steel and this was engraved with the 22 watt diode creality laser and usually with this 20 or 30 watt diode laser I'm using 200 mm per minute speed with 5 and 10 watts I usually I tried with the 100 mm per minute speed but I think I will first time try 400 mm per minute speed full power of course. Well actually I forgot to change the settings so this was engraved on 1000 mm per minute speed full power and I can feel that even this bigger speed was strong enough to leave some permanent engraving on this uh, stainless steel. Of course not so deep like these ones but uh, 200 mm per minute versus 1000 mm per minute speed. And now I'm engraving in offline mode. I'm unplugging the connection cable and inserting the SD card to laptop. And then I'm saving my engravings, save the G-code. And only this G-code has to be in root of the SD card. And then inserting the SD card into the laser engraver. And then when I click the frame, it starts with the framing. And then with the arrows, I have to move the position. And when the position is correct, I can click on the play button and it will start the engraving. This is speed up two times and it's finished. As you can see the method works and uh, not too comfortable for the user, especially when I uh, click the frame button, it will start with the homing and if our position is far from zero zero position, we have to use these arrows quite a lot. Much comfortable solution would be if we would have some kind of screen with uh, more possibilities. One important thing to notice that this will only work from the light burn by default. If you want to use this from the laser GLBL, you have to modify a little bit the header. This can be done automatically. I explained this very detailed in my previous video with the 22 watt diode laser. So you can check that if you want to use the offline engraving with the laser GLBL. The conclusions. Well, I can repeat my words from 22 watt version review. 
that uh, I have that feeling that this is some kind of different company inside the Creality. So uh, for this, I can say that it is 100% finished product because to be honest, uh, Ender 3, Ender 7, so those are, for example, printers which were, I don't know, 96, 97% finished and then we have to do some tweakering and uh, different settings to make it perfect. And this is perfect out of the box and actually we can start engraving uh, five minutes after we take it out from the box because the frame was completely assembled. Small details like for example the fence, it is turned on now but the fence are operating only when the model is uh, cutting or engraving. So yes, it sounds obvious but it is not the case with most of the engravers. I'm not sure why but that's the case. Few suggestions to make this absolutely number one best laser engraver. First of all, it would be nice if it would arrive with the honeycomb grid because this 40 watt definitely will be used for the cutting mostly and much nicer cutting we have if we use the honeycomb grid below the cutting object. Nicer would be if we would have some kind of screen for the offline engraving and then that would be much more comfortable. Positioning of the laser. Well, sometimes it is hard to see through this glass the position during the framing or boundary check. So my method is that toothpick uh, I explained in a separate video, but much nicer elegant solution would be to have some kind of laser pointer here on the side and we can use that for the positioning and then with some offset uh, we can do the position very precisely. Explain separately in that video. And uh, definitely a uh, nice uh, solution is this, that we have the switch for the normal or precise engraving or cutting. Uh, with this we disable part of the power of this laser module, but it would be nice if we could do this uh, from the software. Because yes, uh, with the precise mode uh, you saw we have nice uh, precise uh, engraving, but uh, from Lightburn I want to start the operation and it will do some engraving and, and it will do the cutting but it will not be switched from the software so that's why it is not too useful for me if I want to use the light burn. For laser GRB users yes it can be useful because uh, they can switch this uh, manually because in laser GRB we can do only one operation at a time but again it's not so user friendly with this laser engraver because uh, you saw you have to create some kind of uh, custom buttons to enable or disable this pump or if you want to do the offline engraving and similar. Well, this was my experience, definitely highly recommended uh, laser engraver from my side. If you have some other experience with it or maybe with the 22 watt version, write me if you like down in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving.